Acts chapter number 10, we did it last week. We, we finished it up the last couple weeks. And uh, to me, this is one of the greatest chapters in all the Word of God. This is the chapter where the Gentiles receive the Holy Ghost, okay? And the Gentiles, the door of salvation is opened to the Gentiles. Now, go back with me just for a moment in Matthew chapter number 10. I think it'll help us appreciate what I'm saying a little better. In Acts chapter number 10, the Lord calls his 12 disciples and uh, he says to them in verse 5, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now think about that, how different that is. We talked about the book of Acts being a transition, taking us from one place to another and from one thing to another. And uh, so he says, go not into the way of the Gentiles, and any city of the Samaritans enter not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this is totally different than what we're used to today. Now, this didn't mean that the Gentiles could not get saved, but if they were going to be saved, they would have to literally become a Jew. They would be what we would call a proselyte, and they would adopt Judaism. So now, I'm going back to Acts chapter number 10, the Gentiles have received the Holy Ghost just like the Jews have received the Holy Ghost. Um, look with me in John chapter number 7. We talk about a transition, and... Uh, in John chapter number 7, it says in verse 39, the last part, the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Look with me, remembering this, what we just read here. Look over in John 14. Jesus says in John 14, 16, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter meaning just like me, just like the one you have, that he, the Holy Ghost is a person, may abide with you forever. So the Lord's getting ready to leave. In John chapter 14, uh, they've already celebrated the, what we would call the Last Supper, and uh, he's going to be betrayed and, and going to be crucified the next day. But he's promised, the promise of the Father is the Holy Ghost. And the gift of the Father is the gift of the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy Ghost. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, lost people do not have the Holy Spirit. Think about that. We have the inner indwelling Holy Spirit. They, they don't. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. He's talking to his disciples. He said, for he dwells with you now, and shall be in you future. Well, the shall be in you has already come because we have an indwelling Holy Spirit. We're, we're, our body is the body of Christ. So on the day of Pentecost, look over to Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. And the Lord says this, and John the Baptist had already said this, but the Lord tells them, John, Acts 1-5, truly baptized with water, passed. John's already been beheaded. He's, he's, uh, he's not doing that now. This was before. But you shall, future, be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So that promise is fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Now, I believe, and I'm just telling you what I believe, I believe the church begins on the day of Pentecost. And I don't believe it can be, uh, uh, the church cannot exist uh, before that because it takes the baptism of the Holy Ghost to put a person into the body of Christ. Um, look over in 1 Corinthians, and this is just in a way of review. I hope you have a Bible with you, because if you don't have a Bible, you're pretty lost in a Bible study. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 13, 
For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So that body is the church, according to Colossians. And the church is the body. This local church is not a body. The body of Christ is the body of Christ. Now, we're a group of believers. We're a church. We're an assembly. Uh, but there is one true church, and everybody in that church is saved. In this church, unfortunately, there are people that are not saved. But you cannot be in the body of Christ if you're not saved because it's the Holy Spirit puts you into the body of Christ, and you don't receive the Holy Spirit until you get saved. So back with me in Acts chapter number 2, the Jews receive the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And they're baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is something God does. Now, you remember the scriptures talk about to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. I don't believe that means that we should go talk to all the Jews and then talk to the Gentiles. But God dealt with Israel. He dealt with the Jews. And then at, because of their fall, because of their rejection, uh, the Gentiles are, are brought in. Now, again, it doesn't mean Gentiles could not get saved before that. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, you had, you had uh, different people. Uh, Uriah was a Hittite, and uh, uh, you had uh, Ruth and these different people. She was, she was uh, a Moabite. So people were getting saved, but it wasn't like it is today. The, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, is primarily made up of Gentiles. But when you get saved, you're not a Gentile anymore. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. So look with me over in Acts chapter number 8. And uh, in Acts chapter number 8, the Samaritans receive the Holy Ghost. All right? So the Bible doesn't contradict itself. When Jesus said, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritans, it was for that time was for that time. It didn't mean forever. But now in Acts chapter 8, the uh, Samaritans receive the Holy Spirit. And notice this. Uh, verse 14, Acts 8, 14. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John, which were apostles, who when they were come... Uh, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So here you have people that are saved and they've been baptized, but they don't have the permanent indwelling Holy Spirit. Verse 17, then laid they their hands on them and they, these Samaritans, received the Holy Ghost. So now you have the Jews have the Holy Ghost and now you have the Samaritans have the Holy Ghost. Samaritans were a, a mixed people. They would, they would be an interracial pe pe people. They were part Jew and part not Jew. And they didn't worship the Lord in Jerusalem. And they, weren't, uh, they would be considered by the Jews second class citizens. And the Gentiles would be third class citizens. So now in Acts chapter number 10, and we went over this last week. Um, Peter is preaching. Now, think about this. Peter is at Pentecost. Peter and John come down to the Samaritans and lay hands on them, and they receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter is the one God uses uh, for the Gentiles. Now, where, where was Peter? Peter was in Caesarea, okay? Uh, Peter was in Joppa. But look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. So Cornelius is in Caesarea. And what does the Lord tell him to do? He says, call for Peter, and Peter will tell you what you have to do. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 6. He lodges with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. Now, if you don't have a King James Bible, it stops right there. But the Bible says this, the true Bible says, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So God tells him, send for Peter, and Peter will tell you what to do. 
Now, what's odd about that? Look in Acts chapter number 8 and verse 40. Philip leads the Ethiopian eunuch to the Lord. He baptizes him. Verse 40, Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So where is Philip? He's in Caesarea. Look over in Acts chapter number 21. We're jumping ahead a little bit, but we're talking about Paul now. And the next day, uh, we that were of Paul's company departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which one of the seven had a boat with him. Philip is in Caesarea, but God tells Cornelius to call for Peter, who's all the way over in Joppa, like a day and a half's journey away. Now, why did he do that? I think because it's so important for the Gentiles to get the Holy Ghost, and God uses an apostle, and especially Peter, to bring that message and, and to open that door. Look back with me in Matthew 16. I know we're looking at a lot of places here, but we're studying the Word of God. And you got to, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible, amen? So in Acts chapter 16, Jesus says, Who do men say that I am? Well, you're John the Baptist, you're one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? Well, Peter says in verse 16, Thou art the Christ, the, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. What a tremendous profession of faith. Jesus says this, Blessed are thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So God showed Peter who Jesus was. If you know who Jesus is, God showed you who he is. He revealed him to you. The Lord revealed himself to you. He does that through the word of God and through the Holy Ghost. Now notice what he says next. We very seldom go any further. He said, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. And we know the church is built upon Christ. This, it's not built on a man. It's not built on a sinner. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But notice the next verse. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So the Roman Catholic Church claims Peter as their first pope, even though the church, Catholic Church didn't start till 300 AD at Constantine's time. But he says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt uh, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now here's what I believe. I believe Peter opens the door of salvation to the Gentiles. He's there at Pentecost. He's there with the Samaritans. And he's there with the Gentiles. And he's the only one that's there in all three places where they all receive this permanent indwelling Holy Spirit. Now, in Acts chapter 8, they receive the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hands. In Acts chapter 10, these Gentiles, they believe. And when they believe, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Notice uh, Peter is preaching, Acts chapter 10, verse 43. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So they heard, they heard the message. He gives them the, the uh, crucifixion, and he gives them uh, the, the resurrection, and they believe. They of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Now who are the circumcision? These are the Jews. Peter brings six men with him, and he makes seven. And there's two of Cornelius' servants and there's a Roman soldier, which makes 10. Now, 10 is the number for Gentiles. And where do we find the Gentiles receiving the Holy Ghost? In the King James Bible, Acts chapter 10. All right? They of the circumcision were astonished. They never expected this to happen. They had no clue. They had no idea. When Jesus rose from the dead... And the ladies told them they had seen the risen Christ. They didn't believe it, even though they'd been told. Now, for us, looking back, it seems very simple. For them, at the time, it didn't. 
So, um, as, as many of, as of the circumcision, verse 45, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, how did they know that? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So the tongues, the Bible says the Jews require a sign, and the Bible says tongues are for a sign. So the, the, the speaking in the tongues was not for the Gentiles, it was for the Jews. Because this is how they knew that the Gentiles had received the Holy Ghost. Okay? So some people today believe that you have to speak in tongues uh, to be saved or you didn't have the Holy Ghost. But that isn't true. This is uh, the last time you'll see a Gentile in the Bible speak in tongues. The uh, Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16, there's no tongues. The Samaritans, Acts chapter 8, there's no tongues. So these tongues are a sign for the Jews, okay? Um, notice this. Over in Acts chapter 8, they believed and they were baptized and then what happened? They laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. Notice here. He says, can any man, verse 47, forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So these people have believed and received the Holy Spirit when they believed and now they're going to be baptized. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. So what is the order? It's believe and when you believe, you receive the Holy Ghost and you get baptized. All right? It isn't get baptized and believe. It isn't believe, get baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. So this is the order for now. This is the order for us. This is the order, Bible order. All right? And you have to remember that a lot of the book of Acts is, it's a transition. It's a temporary thing. And then it gets, it all gets settled and we'll see that as we get a little further along. Paul's doctrinal books are actually Romans, and then the next one would be Galatians. But there, we have covered a lot of doctrine in the book of Acts. We've covered doctrine tonight. All right? There's people that go to Acts 2.38 for today to be saved. Look back there. You need to know this is not the plan of salvation for today. Two questions you ask when you rightly divide the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The two questions we've gone over a million times, who is it written to and when is it written for? Acts chapter 2 verse 38 is not written for today. You know the, the Duck Dynasty people down there, they have their television shows and all that. They're, they're Campbellites, they're Church of Christ, and they believe in baptismal regeneration and believe Acts 2.38 and believe you have to get baptized to be saved. And that is not true. That's a heresy. You had to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we go through the book of Romans, there's all kind of verses in there justified by faith. Justified by faith. Justified by faith. So look at Acts 2.38. Peter said unto them, repent. Who are the them? He's talking to the nation of Israel at corporately. He's not talking to Gentiles. He's not talking a New Testament message here. He's talking about a, a, a one-time thing here. Uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. We'll see over in Acts 19 where there were some people who were still believing in this uh, and didn't, didn't, hadn't been enlightened yet with the full, full gospel. Uh, the full gospel is this, Jesus saves, period, by faith, by faith alone. Uh, that's, that's what Jesus does. Um, trying to look, I got a couple notes here. Let's, uh, let's go on, we're going to John chapter, Acts chapter 11. I wanted to say something, I forget what I want to say. Um, oh, let, let's look at this. We've done this before. A lot of this we've done before, but it's good to redo it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Well, no, let's look at something else. Look at Galatians with me. 
Look at Galatians. Chapter number three. And this verse backs up 1 Corinthians 12, 13. By one spirit, you're all baptized into one body. This verse says, you're all the children of God by faith. Galatians 3, 26. In Christ Jesus. Not by works, not by baptism, by faith. Okay? Faith alone. And then it says this. For as many of you, the ones that have been saved by faith, as many of you as have been saved, baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So what does it mean to be baptized into Christ? It means a spiritual baptism. John truly baptized with water. You should be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So the true baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, is a spirit baptism. And when we baptize somebody in water, it's just a picture of what the Holy Spirit does and a picture of Christ and, and the resurrection. All right? Look with me over in um, 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign. All right? 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Who are signs for? According to 1 Corinthians. The Jews require a sign. Are you a Jew? You're not a Jew. If you're saved, you're a Christian. If you're not saved, you're a Gentile. But you don't require a sign. When Moses asked, when the Lord told Moses, go down and tell uh, uh, Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses wasn't concerned about Pharaoh. He was concerned about his own people because they'd already rejected him 40 years ago and didn't want him to lead them. So the Lord said, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to show them the sign. And he told him to throw the, the, serp, the rod down and turn into serpent. And then he told him to put his hand in his shirt. He pulled it out and it was leprous. He put it in again and it was clean. So it was a gift of healing. So 1 Corinthians 13, charity never faileth. So charity is something that just goes on and on. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. So we're going to see a, a prophet in Acts chapter 11. And uh, so that means they're, they're, going to, they're going to stop. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. They're going to stop. Whether there be knowledge, a, a gift of knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part should be done away. Now, when that word perfect doesn't mean faultless, perfect, like, you know, you have a perfect breakfast or a perfect this or that. It means complete. All right? It means to be complete. The man of God needs to be perfect. It means to be complete. So what this verse is saying is there's things that are temporary. But when the Bible comes, they're not going to be necessary anymore. Now, I, mean, I know I'm going out on YouTube and a lot of different places. And, uh, you know, if you believe certain things, believe what you believe. But this is what I believe. And uh, I believe this explains a lot of confusion today where people don't understand that there are things that were in place at one time that aren't in place today. And what people say is, well, you know, it's in the Bible. Well, yeah, but you got to know when it was for and who it was for and what it was for. So go back with me. We'll go to uh, Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter number 11. So again, we have an indwelling Holy Spirit that we receive when we get saved. Now when I got saved, I did not know I received the Holy Spirit. I didn't feel an electric shock. I didn't, you know, I didn't hear any bells ringing or anything like that. But it's just part of what happens, the God part of salvation. All right? Our part of salvation is what? Believe. God does everything else. But when you believe, you, you are regenerated. You're, you're born again. You're a new creature in Christ. And you're baptized into the Holy Ghost and you have an indwelling Holy Spirit, indwelling Holy Spirit, 
and you're sealed until the day of redemption. And all those things are peculiar to New Testament Christianity. It's, 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 Jesus told him, he said, you know the Holy Spirit because he's with you. And he, and he shall be future in you. So I thank God for my position in, in church history where, that I'm at where I'm at. That I, that I have the Holy Ghost and that I'm saved and I'm born again and I'm a new creature in Christ. So look at Acts chapter 11. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard the Gentiles had also received the word of God. News travels fast. So who are the apostles in Judea? They're Jews. They're all Jews because now, up until now, listen, the church starts at Pentecost, but they don't even know the church has started. And the church from Pentecost uh, is all Jewish. It's not a Gentile church. So even though he's... Uh, Christ is building his church, they don't, they don't understand what's going on. So they're still holding on to uh, traditions. When Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. I mean, they're ready, man. They're, they're you know, they, they, were, they stoned Stephen for less than this. Think about it. I mean, they stoned Stephen just talking about the Gentiles. And uh, they're saying, thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and did, did eat with them. So to be uncircumcised was to be unclean. Circumcision was a, a, a sign of the covenant. And a person had to be uh, circumcised. That male had to be circumcised. And uh, you remember, uh, uh, I, it was David talked about the uncircumcised Philistine. To be unclean. So the Gentiles were unclean to these people. And they don't understand God's plan at this point. So this, this truth is, is unfolding, it's progressing. And they, here's what they said. Thou went in to men uncircumcised, and you did eat with them. You did eat with them. Then Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. And now he's going to repeat the whole story. He said, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. Now listen, people in the Bible saw visions, People had dreams. God spoke that way. God speaks to us today through his word. Hebrews chapter 1, you can read it. I mean, God speaks through the word. We don't need dreams. We don't need visions. We have a more sure word of prophecy. The word of God. We emphasize the word of God in this church over and over and over and over and over. You say, why do you do that? Because there's so many people that don't. And they need to understand it. Go with me to the book of uh, somewhere, 1 Peter. Um, I'm in James. I'm getting there, though. All right, 2 Peter. Look what Peter says in 2 Peter. And most of you know this, but he says in chapter 1, verse 14, knowing shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. What's he talking about there? He's talking about John 21, when, when uh, he told Peter that he, he wasn't going to live a long life. And uh, so Peter knows this. He's, he remembers it. He said, moreover, I'll endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. He says, we've not followed cunningly devised fables. This isn't a fairy tale. What we're telling you is truth. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses, notice, of his majesty. When did Peter see his majesty? Up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember Peter, James, and John? And they, and they saw him transformed in front of him. They saw him uh, a picture of his glory. When we see the Lord, we're going to see him in his majesty. You with me? You read the book of Revelation and you see what Jesus looks like in the book. That's the way we're going to see him. When he comes back, he's not coming back as a shepherd. I guarantee you that. He said how, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So you remember that. He said the same thing in his baptism. And the voice 
which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So Peter says, listen, we, we heard a voice. We, we heard it with our ears. We heard the voice of God. And then he says this, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. He said, we have something that's more reliable than hearing a voice. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Do, uh, whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shines in a dark place till the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing not, I might as well read the rest of it. Knowing this first, no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Now that is not what people teach that you can't interpret the Bible, don't read the Bible, you gotta have a priest tell you what it means. That is heresy, that's a lie, somebody's lying to you, that's not true. He said, what it means is this, that man didn't write the Bible. Peter didn't write what Peter thought, Paul didn't write what Paul thought, they wrote down on paper what God told them to put down. We believe every word is inspired. Plenary verbal inspiration. Every word of God is inspired. Amen. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we got off the trail a little bit, but I think it was a good thing to get off. Go back with me. We're almost done, and I didn't get to do what I'm supposed to do tonight. Acts chapter 11, Peter rehearsed the matter. He said, I was in the city, verse 5, of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered in my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. Now go over with me to Colossians, and we're going to close right here. Colossians chapter number 2. Look at verse 13. And you, Colossians 2, 13, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened, given life, made you reborn, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Praise the Lord. All trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Peter did not know it until he got this vision, the sheet coming down three times, and understanding that God was telling him it was talking about the Gentiles. The law is already finished in Acts chapter 10. These Jews in Jerusalem don't understand that. They're, they're trusting Christ, but they're still living under this system under the law. And now Peter comes along and this is earth-shaking news to them because this is the traditions that they've gotten from their fathers. And this is what they've lived their whole life. And now he's telling them something contrary to what they believe. So we're going to close it right there. And uh, let me just say this. In Acts chapter 10, when they heard the word of God, they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They trusted the Lord Jesus Christ with their soul. If you've never done that, you need to do that. It's being called born again. That's what it means to be born again. You're born the first time into the human family. When you trust Christ as your savior, you're born into God's family. If you're not saved, the devil's your father. When you get saved, God's your father. When you're not saved, when you die, you can't go to heaven. When you're saved, when you've believed, when you're a believer, when you die, we are confident and willing to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Thank you.